All right, today's project. I saw this on Etsy. They are brackets for your car trunk that prevent objects, boxes, and stuff like that from sliding around. Seems like a pretty simple type of print and design. I am going to incorporate here a print in place hinge. We covered this in an earlier video. I thought this might be a great way to apply it here. So, in this video, we are going to design our own trunk bracket, print it, and test it. All right, to get us started, we're going to start with the hinge, the print in place hinge, starting off with a cylinder. I kept it at two centimeters in diameter and I shortened it down to a centimeter and a half. Now, after that, I was going to use the paraboloid actually to create the knuckle for this hinge. Now, I'm used the word. Now I use knuckle as my unofficial term for the piece that will extend out into the cavity of the next hinge segment. And if that doesn't make any sense, I'm hoping what you see next will start to make this a little clearer. So there's the paraboloid. I shortened this down as well to about 18 millimeters in diameter and 13 millimeters in length. And then using the alignment tool, I just make sure that this paraboloid is centered on the surface of this cylinder. And then placing the work plane tool on the surface of that cylinder, selecting the paraboloid, and then pressing D to drop it onto that surface to ensure that there is no gaps and it is sitting flush to that surface of the cylinder. Now, just eyeballing it, I did sink this paraboloid deeper into the cylinder by a couple of millimeters just to help move that edge of the paraboloid away from the edge of that cylinder. So next is important because I actually make a duplicate of this paraboloid and then move it out and away from that original paraboloid and I convert it into a hole. This is going to serve as the cutout that will essentially carve out the indentation for the next hinge segment so that this knuckle can actually fit nicely inside. Of that next segment. And I did shorten down the paraboloid hole by another millimeter just to ensure that I have this nice even space between the paraboloid underneath it and the paraboloid hole that is around it by about roughly a millimeter. Now, this is where the bundle group tool comes in handy because I selected all of these pieces and then selected bundle group. And you can see it's outlined in green there. After that, I duplicated it and then took the duplicate and moved it forward using my arrow key, nothing too fancy here, didn't use the ruler, I know. But in either case, just moving this duplicate forward until that orange cylinder had cleared the original orange cylinder by about 0.5 millimeters. Because after this, I can just simply hit duplicate again, and it is going to mimic that same movement forward for all the subsequent duplicates that I will make. So the bundle group is awesome here because if you remember back to the original grouping that we made, it had the paraboloid hole on top of the original solid paraboloid. But when we grouped it using bundle group, it preserved the solid inside. However, when I take this bundle group and union group it to a different solid, that paraboloid cutout will cut into the next cylinder and hopefully allow that knuckle underneath to move around freely inside. So here, since this is the top of my hinge, I didn't need this knuckle sticking out, so I basically ungrouped it and deleted the paraboloid and the paraboloid hole. Now, I won't union group this hinge just yet because I still need to add in some pieces here to attach the opposite sides of this hinge to the different pieces on this trunk organizer. So I'm just using the box here and creating little pieces that will insert themselves or attach themselves to alternating pieces of this hinge. Now, because I have not union grouped this hinge yet, all of those paraboloid cutouts that I have in here as bundle groups are still going to cut through any other shapes that I add to this hinge. All right, it is time to add in the walls for this trunk organizer, and I'm going to attach walls on either side of this hinge by having them attached to those tabs sticking out on either side. Now, each wall was going to have a length of eight centimeters, a width or thickness of five millimeters, and a height of 10 centimeters. 
Now, before attaching the wall to those tabs, it was here where I decided to union group the actual hinge. So selecting all of those pieces, not including the wall, and hitting union group, this now completed that hinge. And hopefully, when printed, it will be print in place where it will basically work coming off of that print bed and requires no supports. And just to make sure it worked, of course, I can select this and make it transparent. And you can see just how perfect that looks. That is a perfect amount of spacing there. You can see the knuckles fitting inside of that space inside of the next cylinder. Looks fantastic. All right, with that done, let's attach these walls to those tabs. I am going to make sure that there is still enough clearance so that this wall does not accidentally fuse to the cylinders of this hinge. And then after that, simply duplicate that wall piece and shift it to the other side. And once again, making sure that there's enough clearance so this hinge can open and close freely. All right, after a quick reposition on my work plane, it's time to add in the base or the feet of this trunk organizer. So these were gonna have the same length and thickness as the walls. And I decided to go with a width of three centimeters. And because I was going to align it to the base of that wall, it would have an overall width of three and a half centimeters, which I felt was gonna be good enough for that strip of Velcro, as well as some teeth that I was going to add to it for some extra grip. Just in case you didn't catch it, use the cruise tool here, as well as the duplicate tool to make things go a lot faster. And just like I did with the walls, I just had to make sure that these base plates were also going to be clear of that cylinder so they didn't fuse to it and prevent this hinge from moving. All right, for some additional support and strength here, I decided to go with some angled brackets to ensure that there was not going to be a lot of flex on that base plate if there were any heavy objects pushing up against that wall. Now, many of the designs on Etsy did not have this feature, but it's my design, so I can do whatever I want. And of course, being able to duplicate this piece spread them apart, and then group them together so they are one object, to then center them along this wall, are just like these quick little steps and pieces that used to take me so long, but as I've been getting used to these tools and how to use them, things move along a lot faster now. It's great. And for the other side, because these pieces have already been placed, I just simply make a duplicate, and then just center it along the face of the other wall. All right, now to help out with this Velcro strip, I kind of felt like the strip was not going to be enough to prevent these things from sliding around too much. And I opted to go with adding teeth. And I just basically took a pyramid shape and split it right down the middle. So basically it would have a completely vertical face to it and then an angled back. The vertical face was the one that was hopefully going to prevent this thing from moving forward. And if I sized it right and angled it right, I should be able to place this on the base plates and still have it being printable without the need for supports. And just futzing around with the size and the angle and all of that, once I came across a size and a shape that I was happy with, then it just became a matter of taking that work plane tool, throwing it up onto the bottom of that base plate, and then dropping this shape onto that base plate. And of course, duplicating that spike, spacing it out, and then duplicating it again, repeating that spacing after that, was a fast and quick way of setting these teeth up. In the end, I opted to have these teeth sticking out about four millimeters from the bottom of that base. Now, the other thing I found interesting was trying to anticipate where these forces, as these boxes in the trunk start to slide up against these brackets, where I would need to place these teeth, where would it be the best position for them along this base? Was it towards where the wall is, underneath the wall? Was it further back, along the back end of that bracket? In the end, I decided to place the teeth directly underneath the wall. 
I figured this would be the best way to help prevent this bracket from sliding when a box was being pushed up against it as the car was moving around. All right, enough designing. Let's print this up and let's see if this actually works. All right, printing went off without a hitch. It was just a matter of cleaning it up and attaching on the rough side of the Velcro strip onto the base and then testing it out in the car. Now the vehicle that I want to use this in is an older vehicle, so the upholstery is a little bit more compressed, worn down. And when I place the bracket on here, I noticed that the Velcro did not stick, which is going to be a problem because that is really what's going to hold this bracket in place. And it didn't take much for me to be able to knock it over. So right away, I was thinking this was not going to work. But I did want to check it out to see if maybe it was an interior issue. So I went to a newer vehicle and tried it there. And sure enough, it did stick. So again, this was an issue regarding the interior. Newer interior, Velcro will stick. But for my older vehicle, the interior was sort of matted down, so it was not going to stick. So it was here that I decided I might need to make some modifications to this bracket. Ultimately, what I'm thinking I need to do is actually make a piece or a tab that sticks out towards the box or towards the package so the package can actually sit on it and really help to anchor this bracket down and prevent it from flipping over or uh, not being able to grip into the carpet. So that's essentially it. And I've made these additional pieces here so that I can add them onto it after I've printed this up. Now I had to do it this way because in order to print this bracket, it needs to be printed in this orientation. So Rather than having to put in a bunch of supports to elevate this so I can fit in these tabs, I'm just printing these tabs up separately and then attaching them afterwards. Hopefully it works. I wasn't too happy about having to print these pieces up separately and then having to assemble it because the whole point of this was being able to print this bracket up as one piece. But right now we just needed to test it. So this is our test box, about 25 pounds or 12 kilograms. And the test run with a simple turn shows that it doesn't take much before it slides right across the back trunk. So you'll notice that I threw down a rug here. And the reason why is because this actually allows the bracket with the Velcro to stick to it. So I was going to use this as my first test where we have the bracket that can actually stick to the carpet. And let's see if this works in this scenario, basically simulating a new car interior. So once I had the brackets in place, it was time to test it out. So I'm just basically driving around the neighborhood, making left-hand turns, and just trying to see if this box will move. And it didn't. It stayed in place. Next, I needed to repeat this test, but this time with the old original car carpet or my minivan carpet. And let's see if this thing would slide around knowing that the Velcro was not going to stick to the carpet. And with a simple left-hand turn, this box just moved, pushed that bracket out of the way and went right across the back of the van. Okay, so next it was time to test those modified brackets, the one with the tabs sticking to the front so that the box could actually sit on these tabs and try to hold this bracket in place. So for this, I really went hard on these turns and uh, yeah, really gave it a good test. It took out the camera each time and the box stayed in place. This thing did not move at all. So I was definitely thrilled with those results, but I still wanted to make this bracket something that I could print up as one piece. So I started thinking about what was really important for this bracket to work. Basically, having the weight of that object or box sitting on those tabs and really the Velcro not having any impact on it at all. I started thinking about maybe flipping this design. So back to Tinkercad we go, and as you can see here, all the different versions and iterations of my design are all splayed out in this area. But I was going to go back to the original design, and you can see how we have that platform that sticks out and away from the box, 
where I would then have the ability to stick on the Velcro strips. I was now going to flip it so that those feet or tabs are now going to face to the inside and I'm going to do away with the hinge because in order to print it up as a print in place hinge, it has to be oriented in this way on the build plate and it was going to interfere with how the box was now going to sit on those tabs. I wanted to sit flush and I didn't want that hinge to get in the way. So I did away with the hinge and I'm basically going to go with two pieces here that are basically duplicates of each other so I can just place them along the sides of my box. Okay, so here I just added a sketch to the side. I thought I would add a bit of a chamfer, a couple of strips there for reinforcement. I'm not sure how effective these are going to be, but whatever. I was just going to try this out and see and not really have it stick out too much because, again, I want this box to be able to sit right up against this bracket. And again, with the sketch tool, have the ability to turn these sharp corners into smoothed out edges or rounded edges or corners and that's how I'm basically going to create this chamfer on the inside corner of these brackets. I'll include again another link to the sketch tool if you are not familiar with this it is an awesome tool. So once I was happy with that shape I exited out of the sketch tool and basically created duplicates of this strip and spaced them out grouped them and then made sure that they were centered to my red bracket. And before I forget, I did take one row of those gripping teeth and I flipped it because again, this bracket was now facing the other direction. So I wanted to make sure I had one row of teeth that had that flat surface facing in the direction that I didn't want the bracket to slide. So again, to add that extra bit of grip, Having these teeth flip down onto the print bed allowed me to print these up again without the need for supports. I was pretty happy with this design. It was time to print up two of these now and let's test them out. Simple print. And now I'm placing it under the box, one on each face there and putting it through its paces. Again, I sort of accelerated through this left-hand turn and took out the camera, but the box stayed in place. So pretty happy with this design and the results of it. It's easy to print, requires no supports, and basically just a couple of duplicates and you've got yourself a set. I'm going to use these and yeah, works great. The other nice thing I love about it is that I can just store it in the van. They don't take up much space at all. And just a side note here, if you're going to make one of these, I would definitely go with PETG or PETG filament. It's just going to be a little more resistant to warping if the temperatures inside your car start to really climb. But that's it. This was a fun project. Fun testing it. And until next time, take care, and we'll catch you on the next video.